how to calculate and create the correct compound radius, or rather, the correct conical profile for a stringed instrument fingerboard. For a given radius at the nut, there's only one mathematically correct radius for the end of the fingerboard that will result in a truly even playing surface under each string. And in this video, you're going to learn how to solve for it. More advanced fret and fretboard profiling techniques do exist, which include deviations from and modifications to conical leveling. But understanding how to properly conically level a fingerboard is the foundation for understanding everything else. All credit for the upcoming mathematical formulas goes to renowned luthier Don McRosty of Red Diamond Mandolins in Athens, Ohio, as illustrated in the Guitar Player Repair Guide by Dan Earlywine. I've just made one very minor adjustment, which I'll point out later. So let's get started and jump right into the math and my personal method for applying that math to leveling a fingerboard in the real world. Measure the distance from the nut to the 12th fret. This is T. Measure the width of the nut. This is WN. Measure the width at the 12th fret. This is WT. Now plug these numbers into the following formula. T divided by parentheses WT divided by WN end parentheses minus 1 equals X. In this example, divide 2 by 1.6 to get 1.25, then subtract 1 to get 0.25. Then divide 12.75 by 0.25, and you'll get 51 inches. That 51 inches is x, which we'll use in our next formula. rd equals rn, parentheses, x plus d, and parentheses, divided by x. This is going to tell us which radius blocks to use and where. Pay close attention, because this is where it starts to get interesting. rd equals fingerboard radius at d, Rn equals radius at the nut, and D equals an arbitrary distance from the nut. What we're solving for here is the radius at a given distance from the nut. On a 25 and a half inch scale, for example, we might want to find the radius at 5 inches from the nut, 10 inches from the nut, and 18 inches from the nut to give us a complete picture of where to use our radius blocks. This neck is a straight 7 and a quarter inch radius, so we'll plug in 7.25 inches for Rn and 51 inches for x, then work out the formula three separate times using values of 5 inches, 10 inches, and 18 inches for d. We'll use 5 inches as an example. Add 51 and 5 together to get 56, then multiply that by 7.25 to get 406 inches. Then divide 406 by 51 to get 7.96 inches. That would mean for a compound radius on this neck, the radius will be 7.96 inches at 5 inches from the nut, or around the 4th fret. Repeat this with 10 inches and 18 inches, and we'll find that the radius should be 8.67 inches around the 9th fret, and 9.8 inches around the 21st fret. Round up to the nearest radius, and we can say that this will end up as a 7 and a quarter to 10 inch compound radius neck. Now this is critical to understand. These numbers don't match up perfectly with our radius blocks, but they don't have to. We're only using the blocks to rough in the radius before blending everything together with a full length sanding beam. For example, based on the numbers for this neck, I'd use a 9.5 inch radius block from about frets 4 to 15, a 10 inch radius block from 16 to the end, and leave the first few frets alone as they're already at the target radius for that part of the neck. Then I'd blend everything together with a full length beam along the string paths, which means leveling parallel to the strings as opposed to parallel to the center of the neck. Keep in mind that using a radius block doesn't necessarily mean sanding the actual full radius of the block into the board. Use them strategically, and remember that using pencil marks and a full length straight edge will ensure that you don't remove more fretboard material than you have to. This is also worth pointing out. If you measure the string spread at the nut and the string spread at the 12th fret, as Stumac advises in their compound radius formulas from the Guitar Player Repair Guide, you'll end up with a slightly larger number for the end of the fingerboard, meaning a flatter radius, compared to measuring the widths of the neck. The numbers from either measurement are so close that it doesn't really matter which one you use, so don't worry about this. The radius blocks will rough in the conical profile, and after that, the full length beam leveling along the string paths will true everything up all by itself with no math required. The book also mentions a third formula, which you can deal with on your own if you like. For me, 
The first two formulas are complicated enough and provide all the information I'd ever need. In summary, pick your starting radius at the nut, then calculate the radius of the midpoint of the fingerboard and the end of the fingerboard. Get the neck straight, lay the guitar parallel to the workbench with a full length neck rest call under the neck for support, then use individual radius blocks to rough everything in according to your calculations, mark the fingerboard with a pencil or china marker, then level everything flat along the string paths to complete the compound radius to perfection. Remember that leveling along the string paths alone will create a compound radius once either the starting or ending radius has been established along the length of the board. For greater accuracy that accounts for any changes in the fretboard when the neck is under string tension, try under string leveling. String up the guitar, tune it to pitch, set it up exactly how you want it, and level. If you have relief in the neck, you'll want to use the Rectify Master Katana to match the relief curvature. Alternatively, you can simply set the neck straight and use a straight understring leveling tool like the Rectify Master Lite or other tools based on Davide's patented design. Then add relief back to the neck after leveling as desired. I've also used 1 inch carbon fiber I-beam from Dragon Plate Carbon Fiber in New York, though it's much more expensive than any of the other options you'll find. Check the description box for more details on understring leveling. Please just keep in mind that whether you go the DIY route or purchase a tool from somewhere other than Rectify Master, that Davide Bisoli, the inventor and owner of Rectify Master, is the only person in the world to hold multiple patents on tools designed specifically for understring leveling, including the Japanese patent JP 2011-248-314A. In the meantime, enjoy this quick demo of a 1972 thin-line Telecaster I defretted, re-radiused, and refretted in accordance with all of the principles I covered in this video, as well as some of the aforementioned advanced fret profiling techniques, which are basically just adding what I call selective fall away and carving a bit of relief into the frets themselves under the low E and A strings using the Rectify Master Katana with its truss rod tighten to make the tool convex. I've included the setup specifications as a text overlay so you can see how crazy low of an action a compound radius with some understring leveled fall away is able to achieve with huge bends that don't choke out. As a final proof of concept, I'll let you in on a little secret. That 1972 Thinline Telecaster's neck is the same one I used in this video to demonstrate the compound radius formula. I'd love to make a separate video going over the geometry of the compound radius, so check the description box for updates. In the meantime, even without understanding the geometry, you now have the mathematical formula to use on any fingerboard with any dimensions so you'll know the correct conical profile in any scenario. The benefits of a compound radius are for yet another video, as in my opinion, they go well beyond the ability to bend strings farther without issues. As an avid guitarist, my fretting hand always notices a tremendous difference, and conically profiled boards just feel like home to me. Other players completely disagree, and that's where preference comes in. There may be only one mathematically correct true conical profile for any given fingerboard, but there is no correct preference. Some people prefer single radius boards or compound radius boards that deviate from a true conical profile. We also have to consider that once a neck has some relief in it, compared to being completely straight, it deviates from a true cone anyway. And that's where all this fretboard and fret leveling business gets far more complicated than most people realize. And remember, the lower you want your action without issues, the more complicated it gets. It also explains why people would go to such great lengths to master fretwork, such as Davide Bisoli and his invention of the truss rod adjustable Rectify Master Katana, or Gerd Anka and his invention of the Plec machine. But now that you know the basics, you'll be well on your way to shaping fingerboards and fret tops like a pro, even if you don't own any patents or expensive equipment. If you found this video helpful, Hit that like button to show your support and help my content reach more viewers. And as always, stay tuned for more Guitar Everything, right here on Guitar MD.